the whole bible is about jesus the old testament is christ concealed the new testament is christ revealed the holy spirit is sent to reveal jesus to us i believe christianity is more than a religion it's a relationship but i also believe christianity is more than a relationship it's a revelation you don't become a christian because you heard information you become a christian because the holy spirit makes jesus real to you he becomes so real he becomes alive for you now not because he's dead but because he becomes alive to you now and then as you receive him as you take him in your life begins to change my challenge with this even with the topic of talking about jesus i i first of all owe you an apology i have never done a sermon all about Jesus. I preached always about Jesus, never done a series about Jesus and I felt guilty. I said, Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. I was like, I preached 867 sermons that are typed and about a few hundred that are not typed and I said, Lord and I have not dived in just in who because we always talk about Jesus, always sing about Jesus and every message, everything is about him but we want to take a moment and actually dedicate a whole series to this person and to dive in to discover this person of Jesus. Now I understand the moment I mentioned that I'm going to do a sermon and a sermons on Jesus you probably have said oh you know I know a lot about it already. I know you do but that's not what this is going to be about. I feel like many people have received Jesus but they have not discovered Jesus. Elsa was a Jewish girl during Nazi regime and she was actually in a parade where Hitler was riding his limo. She couldn't stand there too long so as a little kid she started to cry hysterically. She cried so loud that she made a big noise to the fact that Hitler on his limo stopped, walked to the crowd where this little Elsa was and patted her on her on her head and said few kind words not knowing she was a Jew eventually when the holocaust started she she escaped germany just by luck and god's favor she came to the united states but she was a devout atheist she didn't believe in jesus she didn't believe in god at one time some of her friends invited her to a movie theater but they didn't tell her it was a church so she came to a movie theater thinking it's a party and finds out it's a church. She was very repulsed by the fact that she heard that this Jesus, the Jewish man, they worship him as a Messiah and not only she doesn't believe in Jesus as a Messiah, she doesn't believe in God at all. But because of the love and the community that she felt in that movie theater, she kept coming back. Until one time she actually decided even to believe in God but not in Jesus. And she told God, if Jesus is who Jesus says he is, I need to meet him personally and I want you to see what happened next. Eyes on the screen. And so I said, if you are really who you are, said you are, you reveal yourself to me and he appeared to me. He, he, re yes, now, really. Now Elsa. Yes, really. Were you drinking? No, I don't drink and I don't smoke. Drugs? No, not, no, no drugs either. Never. He appeared to you? Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, he all of a sudden stood there and he says, I am the Messiah that you people are waiting for. What did he look like? If I tell you how he looked like, he was absolutely very, very, very handsome. He had a face that nobody can put on, on paper. Nobody can draw of him. He is so beautiful. That's why I think he says in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt make no eight graven images because nobody would do him any justice. He was had out of his eyes streamed love. He was so beautiful and so soft spoken. And you could tell that, I don't know how to explain it except that you fell in love with him without saying a word. And when he came to you, you then, you realized Jesus then was the I Jewish knew, Messiah? Then I knew, I knew that I had met the God of Israel. Elsa, I, I have a question for you. This entire interview, there have been tears 
You, your eyes are all teary. How come? Whenever I talk about Yeshua, my Savior, I get homesick for him. It's something that comes up from my innermost being that I want to see him again, and I cannot help. Come on. Jesus reveals himself to people. Sometimes in an incredible, it's okay. Just leave it like this. In an incredible, incredible ways. Like I've said already, our desire is not to explain Jesus, but to experience Jesus. Our desire is not just to give information, but the manifestation of who Jesus is. We want to see not only that he is a savior, but that he is who he said he is. Last week when we went to the uh, California after our Sunday service, I'm going to share just one testimony of a girl who for two years ago, she had two car accidents. And these car accidents were so severe that she saw a chiropractor every single week. They had to realign her neck. They had to realign her back because she was in excruciating pain. On Sunday night in the first service, God healed her back totally. On Tuesday, on Monday night, God healed her neck totally. On Wednesday night, it's been now three days and she started to testify with tears rolling down her eyes that God completely realigned everything in her back and everything in her neck. Jesus Christ is the same. This is not just Jesus you hear about this is Jesus you experience just yesterday we were not very far from Seattle and this young lady who's been living a life of chronic constant migrant headaches and during service it was like a little seminar as we started to minister healing through the name of Jesus Christ she says like literally something just like a vacuum sucked everything out and all of those headaches were completely gone right there without Advil because Jesus is the best Advil. He's the best pill. He's the best solution. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. A young man who we also ministered to actually three times because first two times he, nothing was happening. And I love when people are honest. When nothing is happening that they're honest about it. And he was mentioning nothing was happening. And during the third prayer I said instead of asking Jesus to heal you or commanding the pain to leave. I said those of you who are still ill just raise your hands and thank Jesus that he's your healer and so I kind of took him a little bit by surprise and as this young man sitting all the way in the back raised his hands and right after the prayer I was kind of led to ask him specifically did your pain leave he started to move he started to move he says all of the twice time two times we were praying he says the pain was there he says now the pain was no longer there because Jesus took it let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ <laughs> Who is Jesus? I like what one author said. He is the man who was born in obscure village, a child of a peasant woman. He worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30. And then for three years, he was a preacher. He never wrote a book, never held an office. He never owned a home. He never had a family. He never went to college. He never put his foot inside of a big city. He never traveled 200 miles from a place where he was born. He never did one of the things that usually accompany greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He had nothing to do with this world except the naked power of his divine manhood. While still a young man, the tide of popular opinion churned against him. He was turned over to his enemies. He went through mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. His executioners gambled over the only piece of property he had on this earth. It was his coat. When he was dead, he was taken down and laid into a bar of grave through the pity of a friend. Such was his human life. He rises from the dead. 21 centuries later, today he is the centerpiece of human race. He's the leader of a column of progress. And I am within the mark when I say that all the armies that ever marched, all the things that were ever built, all the parliaments that ever set, all the kings that ever reigned put together have not affected the life of a man on this earth as powerfully as the one 
solitary life. You know, sometimes we don't realize when we read the Bible that Jesus was a single man and started his ministry at 30. I am 31. Here's you looking when Jesus started to minister. He wasn't, you know, a very aged like Moses when he started his ministry at 80. It seems like very little experience, very little, very short time. And in this short time, he split the history. In this short time, he made such a big difference. I like what one author said is Jesus Christ he's the meeting place of eternity and time the blending of divinity and humanity the junction of heaven and the earth Jesus is God spelling himself out in a language man can understand Jesus is God spelling himself out in the language man can understand when Billy Graham was a young boy he he had an, a deep obsession with ants and he wanted to save ants. He loved ants and one particular time he was told by his mother that a uh, man who comes to kill ants is coming over to the house and so Billy quickly ran outside and, and told the ants, took the biggest, the fattest ant because he thought that was the leader and told them I want you to go and tell all the rest of the smaller ants because you have bigger influence there. Tell them that tomorrow someone is gonna wipe them out of this house. I hate that guy. I don't like that guy but nevertheless he's coming. Get all the ants out. You have 24 hours to do that. And he says I dropped that ant back into that little ant hole and this ant went continuing about its business without giving other people direction or mobilizing an army for exodus. He said next day the mean guy came and he killed all the ants. I found that big ant and I picked it up and I told it why didn't you help me out? Why didn't you save other ants. He came home to his mom as a little child crying and saying, mom I told them to get away but they didn't listen to me. And his mom told him something that he said started to change his Christian life. He said, Billy the only way you could have saved those ants is if you would become an ant and go to their world and tell them in their language that their world is in danger. And she asked him this question. For the love of ants, would you sacrifice the comfort of your bed, your parents and your food to become an ant? And Billy said, I love them, but not that much. <laughs> that is exactly what Jesus did. He became us. God who created legs learned to walk. God who created speech learned to speak. God who created the harmony of marriage became an embryo became a baby. He had to run for his life from a threat of Herod and this God, he became us. Not just to tell us to run but first to pay for our sins and take us on the journey of salvation. What makes Jesus unique? This message I want to briefly just mention the, the uniqueness of Jesus. Next week I'm going to talk about the divinity, meaning that Jesus is God. It's going to be controversial, but a very powerful message because a lot of people believe in Jesus but not as God. What makes Jesus different than any other person? I'm going to give you just simple six things. I would encourage you to write them down so that you will know about your faith. You will know why you believe. I know many of you became Christian because that's how it was given to you with your mother's milk. You grew up in a more of a Christian society where it was acceptable to serve Jesus. What, is, what does it mean to know Jesus? What makes him so unique? The first thing what makes Jesus so unique is the fulfillment of numerous specific prophecies. Unlike any other person, any other religious leader, any other great hero who appeared on this earth, unlike the great inventors or the billionaires of our day, Jesus was the one that arrived on this earth and before he arrived around 333 prophecies were already predicted about him. These prophecies some of them were so specific and some of them were so detailed. It wasn't just one prophecy. It wasn't just some kind of a shadow in the Old Testament. This was 300 over 300 prophecies about his life. Somebody one of those guys could do math really well. They did a calculation and they found this. That 150 
of those prophecies occurred in six hours Jesus was on the cross. Think about this. Half of the prophecies about Jesus' life happened in six hours. Six hours. It almost seems like the six hours Jesus had to be careful make sure every one of them is fulfilled. Because they, they were so specific, they were so detailed and they said this is that the probability of eight of the 333 prophecies coming to pass is equivalent to covering the state of Texas two feet deep in silver dollars one of which has a special mark on it with only one chance to pick the right one. It's impossible. Just the prophecies alone make Jesus have a category by himself from every conqueror, every general, every inventor, every billionaire and every leader or any teacher the world has ever seen. To be able to fulfill that is impossible and Jesus fulfilled it. That's why many times he says as the scriptures said for the scriptures to be fulfilled, for the scriptures to be fulfilled. Number two that makes Jesus unique and different from anybody else is that his miracles. The Gospels record about 35 miracles of Jesus Christ and it also includes this. If all the miracles we've written there will not be enough books in the world for us to read. Meaning there was countless, countless of miracles that Jesus did. Jesus unlike any religious leader of his day or our day, any inventor, any billionaire or any teacher, Jesus demonstrated power over nature by stopping the storms speaking to the winds. Jesus demonstrated power over animal kingdom by riding a donkey that was never broken and that donkey didn't flip him. Some of you don't realize that but it actually takes power. Try to ride a horse that's not been broken. Don't do that by the way because <laughs> you'll end up in a hospital. Jesus demonstrates his power over animal kingdom. Jesus demonstrated his power over demons. They, they were screaming toward this young man named Jesus when he came into the synagogue and they said we know who you are you're the son of most high God. Jesus demonstrates his power over disease. He killed he healed all matter of disease. He demonstrates his power over death. He raised the dead and raised himself from the dead. Jesus Christ had power that nobody on this earth has ever had. The third thing that makes Jesus unique and different from anyone else is the fact that his teaching was very unique. The Bible says that when he was teaching the scholars were confused and children could understand. Jesus with his teaching was taught unlike the scribes because he had authority. Socrates, Socrates, he taught for 40 years. Plato taught for 50 years. Aristotle, he taught for 40 years. Jesus taught only for three and a half years and has made more difference with his teaching than all of these guys combined. It wasn't philosophy that was in teaching. It was very simple. So simple that till this day his words are being used. So simple that till this day his words are still making an impact. Napoleon it's accredited to him we don't know for sure is that when a French general and eventually an emperor he was considered one of the greatest generals you know on this earth even in the history smart man toward the end of his life this is what he said about Jesus he said well then I tell you Alexander Caesar and I have founded great empires upon what did these creatures creations of our genius depend on and he answers the question he said it was upon force. Jesus alone founded his empire upon love and to this day millions will die for him. I think I understand something of human nature. I tell you all these men and I am a man. None else is like him. Jesus Christ was more than a man. I have inspired multitudes with such an enthusiastic devotion that they would die for me. But to do this it would be necessary that I had to be visibly present with electric influence in my looks and in my words and in my voice. But when I saw men and I spoke to them, I lit the flame of self-devotion in their heart. Jesus alone succeeded in raising 
the mind of a man toward the unseen that it becomes insensible to the barriers of time and space across the chasm of 1800 years Jesus Christ makes a demand which is beyond all others difficult to satisfy he asks for that which is a philosopher may seek in vain in the hands of his friends a father of his children a bride of her spouse a man of his brother he asks for a human heart and he will have it entirely to himself he demands it unconditionally forthwith his demand is granted in defiance of time and space the soul of man with all its powers and faculties becomes annexation of the empire of Christ all who sincerely believe in him experience that remarkable supernatural love toward him this phenomenon is unaccountable it's altogether beyond the scope of man's creative powers time the great destroyer is powerful to extinguish this sacred flame time can neither exhaust its strength or put a limit to its range this is what strikes me the most i have often thought about it this is what proves to me quite convincingly that jesus is god it's a man who conquered nations it's the man whose name brought fear to people and he said i can only inspire if I am there present with people with my voice with my words and with my passion and he said Jesus didn't write a book didn't leave a video and he says today he inspires millions of people and they die for him and he doesn't ask for their time he asks for something that every philosopher every husband every father everyone asks for the heart and people willingly give that to him without a sword without a gun without a tank and without force he said that's what makes this man different than any man not Alexander not Caesar and even myself he says I don't come close to this man this man must be God the, 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 the third the fourth thing that makes Jesus different is he is unique in his impact Jesus is unique in his impact more than two billion people claim to follow the teachings of Christianity within 300 years Christianity grew from Jesus and few followers to become the religion of the Roman Empire though early followers were often persecuted or put to death for their beliefs Christian faith spread with unstoppable power vast numbers of hospitals schools and orphanages and other works to help people have been started by those who follow his teaching till this day we know that the impact of Jesus is actually represented in this room Every time we give to the needy, we give to others, Jesus becomes that pattern and becomes that example. Even when Dwayne shared his story today, the difference that Jesus made, the people I've shared with just the scope of few testimonies, the healings, the deliverances, the changed lives. This is the impact that Jesus makes that no other person has ever made in his life. The fifth, Jesus is the only follower who is still alive. Jesus is the only follower who is still alive. The founder, excuse me, the, the founder. He wasn't a follower unless he was a follower of God. Mm. He was a follower of God but he was a founder of our faith and he is still alive. And we're not just saying this because we feel him in, us, in our hearts. We're saying this because it's a historic fact that Jesus is alive every other religious leader that is either dead or one day will be Jesus died and rose from the dead somebody said if you want to destroy Christianity find the body of Jesus the only thing it takes to completely wipe out Christianity from the earth is to find the body if you find the body produce the body Christianity is a joke because actually everything in Christianity hinges on the fact that Jesus is the son of God who died for the sins and that is verified by his resurrection if he didn't rise from the dead that means he didn't die for our sins and if he didn't die for our sins then honestly all of that he was a good teacher he goes in a category with the Muhammad with Confucius he goes in a category with Joseph Prince and so many other people who consider themselves great or generals or inventors but he doesn't become the anchor of human life and he doesn't become the foundation of our eternal salvation and everything hinges on the fact that Jesus died and he rose again and I'm not talking about where people get visions and they see Jesus because sometimes you can 
can see a vision and see your loved ones who passed away you can see them you can see things in your mind you can fabricate things in your mind we actually are talking about that Jesus is actually alive yes with the Holy Spirit he's with us but it's not just the Holy Spirit that makes him alive Jesus is today alive he actually makes appearances to people today even now he makes appearances he made appearance to apostle paul when he was walking this was years after jesus was gone he showed up back on this earth faced paul and talked to him he made appearance to esla to uh Elsa I'm sorry to, to Elsa and he showed up to her and she met him eventually the testimony goes on you can watch it on YouTube when she died because she had an incident in the pool and she went to heaven and saw exactly the same Jesus that she saw here on this earth and she met other great people like Pete like like David and others and she interacted with them she was shocked to find out that the Jewish writers of Old Testament worshiped the Jesus the Jewish people rejected so Jesus Christ is alive He's alive today that's why he heals people that's why he changes people because he's still alive now i like i was studying this week a little bit more about this and it came to interesting conclusion and um, few of very respected people one of them is one of the greatest lawyers in british history he's already passed passed away in 1940 uh, 1914 to 1997 is when he was alive and this guy is considered one of the greatest lawyers that this world is seeing twice the queen of england she uh, he was knighted by the queen elizabeth twice and he completed a lot of different things wrote a book and in his record there's 245 murder cases that he cleared this guy's complete genius and he started to study the resurrection of jesus christ and started to look for the proof and this is what he said in his statement he says i humbly add i have spent more than 42 years as a defense trial lawyer appealing in many parts of the world i say that the evidence for the resurrection of christ is so compelling that it compels the acceptance by proof which leaves absolutely no room for doubt one of the founders or harvard university who also wrote a book upon which actually our law system, our legal system is built on today. You can also see his statement of what he said. He said the resurrection of Christ is the most verifiable fact of ancient history. Now a little background about this guy Simon. He actually was an atheist. He was one of the founding fathers of the Harvard University and one of the students challenged him he said since you know so much about the legal things and he said why don't you study the resurrection of Jesus to disprove Christianity so he started to study the resurrection of Jesus Christ he looked at the facts he looked at the historical writings he looked at different things and he came to that conclusion first he became a follower of Jesus and then he this is what he said and he wrote a book about the testimony and his discovery of following this we have to understand this the resurrection of Jesus is so shocking and so crazy and so powerful it made 12 guys 11 guys who were so scared for their lives to give their lives for the truth they didn't expect Jesus to rise from the dead they were as shocked about his resurrection as Pharisees they didn't want him to rise from the dead they were not expecting that we know they were running for their life the Pharisees fabricated a story and they said that Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus didn't rise from the dead. The disciples stole his body because the soldiers saw that when they were sleeping. Now use your brain. Soldiers saw disciples stealing the body when they were sleeping. Can you trust somebody's account of when they sleep? Of course not. So whatever soldiers saw, it was as a result of pizza. They didn't see anything because if you sleep you don't see anything so remember this this story is circulating today and that is the basis that Jesus didn't rise from the dead soldiers who were sleeping saw disciples stealing the body but disciples thought Pharisees stole the body the resurrection of Jesus is so powerful they changed lives the empty tomb you know we were in Jerusalem in Israel just months ago and I want you to see the picture we were standing here with the group by the tomb of Jesus Christ now for the record there is two of them in Jerusalem they're both empty 
people debate how come there is two tombs that, that doesn't bother me what bothers me what, what's interesting is that both tombs are empty you can't find the body of Jesus Christ I'm pretty sure they'll find a third tomb and that one's still gonna be empty but you know who I found I found right there in that close by where we were sitting there is this picture I found Jesus there <laughs> right by the tomb this is not a joke I didn't copy it we, I took this picture with my phone right beside the tomb I, said, I knew he rose from the dead there he was sitting <laughs> I think it's like some Italian guy uh, who was there but he definitely makes a good proof to Christianity about his uh, him being there Jesus Christ is different than anyone else and today I took these few points to remind to us from the human perspective from the perspective of statistic that with this along with many other things makes Jesus unique incredible and different amen Jesus is not just somebody I admire as a teacher it Jesus is so controversial so crazy that I actually I worship a Jewish man from Galilee you and I we worship him we believe he is God and next week we'll discover what makes him God. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.